You know, every word, every word we sing and then the words they just sang and just in our hearts is worship. And then to listen to God and to what God is saying in our hearts, that is worship. And then giving in the offering, that is worship. And then after the service is over this morning, when we are here and we just have love in our hearts and we have something in our heart, joy and, and faith, uh, this is worship. And we have come here today to highly regard Christ, highly respect him, listen to him, and relate to him. So I'd like you to turn to one proverb just before we begin, and this is a memory verse, Proverbs 15, 24. Would you stand with me, please, and read it? So this is the uh, verse we're going to use in the message. Ready? Proverbs 15, 24. One, two, three. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Another time. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. And one more time. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Here's a diagram. Here's a man. He has his heart. We'll put here his mind. We'll talk about this later. The way of life is where? Above. It's above. Above. And today we're going to teach on Colossians 3, verses 1 to 6. The way of life is above. Let's read it one more time. The way of life is above to the wise. There's a way of life, and it's above me. It's above us. It's above the world. It's above. What, what is above? Way of life. Christ is above. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. God is above us, and the way of life is above. And what do you escape Hell beneath, hell beneath, hell beneath. And hell is in this world, but hell doesn't stop here. That's a good word. Somebody said life is hell. We, what, what do we say back to them? You're right, it can be, but it doesn't stop here. It just started. If you're saved, then this is the closest you'll get to hell. Yeah. But if you're unsaved, this is the closest you'll get to heaven. If you're unsaved, this is as close as you'll get to God and heaven uh, because you're on your way to the continuation of the hell that you are tasting. And the heaven that you are tasting will end here in your life and you will be, you, you will. Okay, you'll be, you're lost. But Jesus came to save us and to bring us from hell to heaven, from the devil to God. He brought us, he brought us from guilt to freedom and from death to life. So the way of life is above to the wise. It's above to the wise. So uh, now just uh, bless your neighbor for a moment and just say to them, we need to know about Christ. We need to know about Christ. The way of life is above. Say that to your neighbor. Okay. You may be seated. We 
We're going to teach on Colossians 3, but there are also two Proverbs that I want you to know and be familiar with. With a, One proverb is this one, the way of life is above. Um, the second proverb is 11, Proverbs 11, 22. And I will only uh, describe it in part now and before we go to Colossians 3. And the le reason is you'll see that we want to teach on the way of life is above. And this is Proverbs 11, verse 22. And this will be a little entertaining for us, I think. Because I'm going to draw on the iPad a beautiful woman. <laughs> so read Proverbs 11:22 with me. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. Let's do it again. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. Now, let's stop there. What's a swine? A pig, a hog, a huge hog the size of a bus, okay? <laughs> a, no, a uh, hog, 200-pound pig, okay? A swine, a hog. And what's in the snout? A gold ring. A gold ring. What's gold mean? It's valuable. Gold is valuable, and so there's something valuable, and there's the pig. And there you have a picture that is very graphic. A pig in my house is not a pleasant thing to have, even if he has gold in his snout. Okay? So you got to digest it for a minute because you think, what is he talking about? Okay, verse 22, part B. So is a fair woman, which is without discretion. What is a fair woman? Beautiful. Would anyone here like to stand up and illustrate it? <laughs> Would any fair ladies like, there's one right there, Marion. Thank you. Look at that. There she is. <laughs> but not the discretion part. Not, not that part. No, you've got discretion. We, we don't mean that. Okay. Uh, so you have a picture here of a beautiful woman, and uh, uh, what what is it about a beautiful woman or a fair woman is that she's attractive to men, and it's a good picture of how there is a contest in a man in regards to she is attractive and I want to be with her, but she is lacking something. So uh, what is she lacking but uh, wisdom? And the, the word here is she is without discretion. And I don't want to go into the discretion part of the verse, but I'd like to change the word because it it might be helpful in our teaching. It's the same meaning in, in generally. But let's say the woman is a liar. The woman is deceitful. But, but she's beautiful. And I'm attracted to her, but I can't trust her. Like she, she will lie to me, she will lie to people. She's a deceitful person, but she is attractive. So uh, let's draw her hat. This is a beautiful hat. Okay. And her earrings. Smi nice smile. Beautiful dress. <laughs> so there, you know, it is obvious that we would be attracted to her. <laughs> so here's the man, and he has 
uh, two parts there. One is, in his heart, he perceives perception, and he has feelings in his heart and, and affections, feelings and affections. And then he has in his mind here reason. And as he gets to know the woman, he, go, he says something like along these lines, this woman is awesome, but unfortunately I can't totally trust her. But she is, she is so, I'm so interested in being with her, but, but why is this? Maybe I could be with her, and, and his feeling... In, interacts with his reasoning and he says uh, maybe she will change maybe I can trust her I just had a great time with her I spent an hour and a half with her at the cafe we get along real well she's funny we talk and she's very attractive to me and so but on the other hand, my reasoning is I can't trust her. I don't know what it is about her, but why is that? That is too bad. But maybe I can run the risk and have a re relationship with her and it will work out okay. This is a a, a kind of profile for our psychology because this repeats itself in many areas. I think um, gambling is a good example. Gambling is a habit that people have and um, you know I can't put the word all the word the whole word up there without misspelling it so anyway. And I say, uh, I, I enjoy running the risk, putting my money down on the table. But my reason says I'm going to lose. But my heart says I enjoy it. I want to do it. But my reasoning says, but I need to pay the bills. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to feed my children. I need to take care of my wife. But in my heart, I say something else. Another thing is um, love affairs that people have. And a man is attracted to a woman, and so on. And there's flirtatiousness, interaction. It's enjoyable in the heart. But my reasoning says it is dangerous. It may ruin my marriage. It may ruin my children will not respect me. I lose the trust and confidence with my grown-up teenagers. Uh, I may even end up losing my job and my respect and my credibility, but I will do it anyway because I will run the risk. This is a gamble to have a fair woman, beautiful woman, without discretion is like a swine with a gold ring in its snout. What's that mean? The pig in my house stinks up my house. But after all, there is a gold ring there. After all, there is something there that I enjoy, but then how long will I enjoy it? Because the stink will eclipse the gold. Because the problems I have will drown out any benefits that I once had. What a study that is. That is why the way of life is above. That's our subject. Look at our diagram. What does this man need in his life here? He needs a way that is above it all. A way is above to the wise. And he is saying, I need help. 
I cannot live this life effectively without Christ. I need help. You think your good little heart is able to handle these temptations? Do you think your kind personality and your good looks and your nice demeanor is going to get you through, through this life? It says the way of life is above to escape what? The hell beneath. Believe me, if you've got a pig in your house, it is something like hell. It stinks. It's filthy. It's not fun talking to it. It's not talking back. It's not enjoyable. You're on the verge of destroying your life and living in the hell below because you did not seek the things that are above. Wow, isn't that amazing? I don't know, did you get it? Do you got it? You got it? That's the introduction to Colossians 3. And that's an amazing way of thinking about it. I think that what we just said is so profound, we could park there for weeks and think about it. Draw, you know, make a list of the... I don't want to... I guess I'm going to have to... Do I have to draw that beautiful woman again? Oh, the, oh her, her hat, she got this hat for Christmas. Okay. The earrings are important. And then the hair, she went, the hair. She improved her, she grew. Yeah, she's beautiful, okay. All right, what does this mean? She is beautiful, but there's something missing. She's deceitful and she's a liar. She will break your heart. She will ruin your life. She is, she, there's something attractive. Do you think that the people that are running around this planet and doing all kinds of things are doing it because they live in their reason? Do you think that reason is able to manage these temptations? Do you think that a man is able to be that reasonable and say, I cannot gamble, I will lose my, I will lose, we had a man in Hungary, he had a problem with it, he'd get his paycheck and go home and gamble it before he got home, his wife would be crying, the children without food, the children without clothing, their family was in desti destitution. But would reason, reason give him counsel? No, the reason, he had reason, he had other reasons to do it that were coming from the passion and desire of his own heart that nobody has a control over. Who has a control over their, their managing money? Why wouldn't they steal it? Who has a control over their heart regarding women? Men cannot handle their own hearts. They need the way above to escape the hell below. Uh, money, uh, women, men, relationships, forgiveness, mercy, being kind, being gentle, being patient, all of these great virtues are simply beautiful ideas but when it comes to really bringing it into my life, it must be God that brings it into my life. It must be God that will control me and manage my life. So we have the reason in the head, but then we have a lot of feeling in our hearts. In our hearts say, I just spent time with this woman again. I tried it again. I tried it again. We just met and we had a beautiful time together. I tried it again and now I'm saying to myself, yes, I'm going to trust her, bring her into my life. I love her. I look at her. I'm motivated by what I see. It all makes sense to me. And God, is heaven, God in heaven is saying to us, listen to me, the way is above God. I am God, and I am the way. Turn to Colossians 3, please, in verse 1. 
I'm so happy to be here tonight, today. <laughs> wow. Man. Whew. It's all blending, I guess. Uh, be with you today here this fine morning. And Pastor Kimo is going to share with the young preachers. Tonight we have preacher boys after the service. Um, we'll have part two on this message. I think it needs to seep in and soak in to our hearts. And uh, I was with a man on the street yesterday. He stumbled out of a bar room in Towson. I was in the night on the street by myself just looking for people to express love to. And he walked up to me and started talking. And we had a talk, and I was heartbroken with what he said to me and his suffering and his pain and his crying. He was surely under the influence of alcohol, but he also was eye to eye looking at me and listening to what I had to say as I shared a few words, but powerful words. And he took my hand at the end and he said, I don't know why you are out here on the street tonight, but I want you to know whatever you came out here to do, you did it. You, in, in other words, you touched my life. You touched my heart. And that was, that was encouraging to me. And I turned and walked away and pray for him. I love it to go, go to bed and think about the man's face and pray for him. May never see him again. And then this morning, pray for him. And that may never see him again, but he's in the hand of God. And so um, look at chapter 3, verse 1 with me, please. If you then be risen with Christ, and the meaning here is that you are risen, co-resurrected with him, <clears throat> then you seek those things. Where are they? Which are above. This verb actually means to be co-resurrected. Because of our union with Christ, we have entered into his death and resurrection at the moment of our salvation. So now we are alive unto him and we understand spiritual truths, realities, blessings, and the will of God. Those amazing benefits and privileges are now rich in our hearts and what we believe, what God has said to us. But we need to hear them in our church. We need to open the Bible and hear who I am, what I have received, what is real. That is what God has promised me. Colossians 3 Verse 1, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. This word means that we set our mind it is translated think or have this inner disposition as a compass points north. The believer's entire disposition should point toward the things of heaven. Um, I, it is not hard to begin to look at the invisible. It, it is not difficult in our picture here we see this man wrestling with this problem. And what is the answer for this man when he's looking at that beautiful woman or he's looking at the gambling temptation or he's looking at his enemy and he cannot forgive him? He must seek the things that are above, which I cannot see them with these eyes, but I see them by faith in what the Bible says. The Bible says that I died. Look at the cross over here. When Christ died, it was not only that I would be justified, that I would be saved, that my sins would be forgiven, 
Not only that I would be in the eyes of God a righteous man in that, that we are, but that cross is also for my everyday life like in this situation. What does he do with this situation? He realizes that he doesn't have peace about it. He realizes that this is not good. It is not clear. He realizes that this is like, where would it bring me? Where does it bring me? I have a, a pig, and it is a grotesque picture, I know, but it is in my house with a gold ring and a snout. But how did I get in this situation? Because there was no cross. The cross says that I died, and now I'm alive, and the woman is a beautiful woman, that's fine, but I don't look twice. I'm not interested. I don't feed that in my soul. Because if I feed it based on my perception, it may be that I'm feeding myself a lie. And I'm saying, I will be happy. I will have a happy marriage. I will be happy love affair. Or I will be rich. Or I will be happy with my riches. Or I'm going to be dishonest, but at the end I will be blessed with what I have. It's much better to seek the things that are above and watch God lead me in a world where I cannot trust my own heart. I must trust that God will lead me in my temptation and become invisible like a hidden man. Colossians 3, verse 3, it says, You are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are dead. Quite a statement. Dead man. Let's say my coat here is dead. Let's put it on the stage. It's dirty, sorry, forgive me. There we go. Dead coat. Hey, coat, talk to me. Can't talk. Hey, coat, wake up. Wake up, coat. Can't wake up. Hey, coat, what is your opinion on this thing? No, can't say a thing. It's dead. Do you realize what's going on around you? There's nothing. It's dead. A man is dead. It, because the cross means that I died. That there is something about my sin nature that no longer has the power. It doesn't have the same power. Another thing, and I realized this last night, was this drug, this drug that is so common, heroin, which is really a killer. The man last night told me that he had 25 friends that have died from overdose. I mean, and he said, I'm, the only reason I'm alive is because I, I, I'm not a drug addict, a heroin addict. I'm another kind, but I'm not a heroin addict. I'm thinking, why couldn't you handle that? Because... Because it's attractive. Because men live by their hearts, not by the way above. Why can't you handle your temptation? Because you're handling it yourself. Because you think you're wise enough and you're strong enough or you're able enough and you're able to handle this life by yourself. But the way of life is what? It is above to escape the hell beneath. And here in Colossians it says that we seek the things that are above and we have this mind that is above. The reality of that cross is a mystery to the world. They know it is even less than that. They don't even care about it. They don't know about it. They have no interest in it. But as we sang today, I am weak, but then I am strong. I am poor, but I am rich. I am blind, but I see. And I found that riches at the cross, and I found the sight at the cross, and I found that I was, what was the first one? Uh, yeah, thank you. I was weak, but I am strong at the cross. The cross 
is the reason why you're living a blessed life. Not your personality or benefits or the connections or the friends you have or don't have. It's the cross that makes the difference. Verse 3, you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. Let's take the coat. It's dead and now it is hid with Christ in God. It's there in a hiding place. What is the point of a hiding place? It's, the, the, it's hidden. Like where? 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 I can't see. Where are you? Where are you? What, what is going on with you? Where, where's the, who are you? Where are you? And your life is not commonly understood by people. And the world is not writing books about this reality of the cross, except in the church. It is in the church where the Holy Spirit is saying to us, that you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, and you've escaped the hell below. Okay, wait a minute. Isn't there hell below for a believer too? Yes. Don't we lose our homes in foreclosures sometimes, or lose a wife or a loved one in death, like everybody else? Yes. Is there hell below here too? Yes, ask Jesus. Jesus went to the cross and died because of the hell below. But look again at Jesus. Three days later, he has overcome the world. And he is saying to us, as I was raised from the dead, so are you. He's saying to us, so the world does not know you, I know you. The world doesn't care about you. I care about you. And I fill you with the Holy Spirit and satisfy you deeply. That's interesting. What about this hidden believer? Here he is. He's hidden. What does that mean, hidden? It means he can't be found, but there's another meaning. He's secure. I have a hiding place. Have you ever been in a warfare and you've been in a hiding place and the enemy can't find you? How about when you were a kid and you were playing hide and seek and your brothers and sisters couldn't find you for the life of them? You were hidden so well and you're there in a secure place, hidden and safe. Well, isn't it amazing we could be hidden in Christ in the very heart of God while we live in this world? That we are safe. It feels good to be safe. It feels good to be secure. It feels good to be cared for. It feels good to be held in the arms of God. Underneath us are his everlasting arms. And to be cared for. Not only with milk and water. I think our diagram here is like the man is appeal. He is drawn to the woman because his life is only milk and water. It's only a thrill for a weekend. It's only milk and water. But to us, it is meat. It is reality forever. It gets better and better. For us, it is God's reality in our life and even in our shoes when we are here in this world. And there is pain and difficulty. There is a resource that comes from God. For we have been raised with him. We are alive now unto God. Hid. The third thing about being hid. Look at. I died. And I'm hid with Christ and God. What are, does, does the world know about this? They don't know about this secret. Why you have this strength and this joy and peace. They don't know. But you know, and you have an identity in that secret place. For me to live is Christ. It really is. And it kind of goes, see, it just see, seeps in. It's like you know it. It's real. That's why you enjoy it. And the affections go also this way too. Because when you take the new heart and the man has a new heart now 
And these affections are for the things above, mindset, the mind, the way the thinking, it, that there is connected with feeling. Like we enjoy it. We enjoy the communion. We enjoy the peace. We enjoy the love. We enjoy the purpose of it. It's like a linkage of mind and emotion, feeling. And that we actually love Christ because we have a new heart. That we love him and his purpose and his plan. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life. And that's a big word. When Christ, who is our life. Life. You know? Uh, it's Thanksgiving is coming up soon, and I, I know that for many Americans, it's a family event, and people travel big distances to go to see relatives. It's maybe the most traveled holiday of the year. Thanksgiving to sit at a table with turkey and gravy and potatoes and be together and talk a little bit and interact and so on, and, and it's um, a whole organic event of, of family life. And we know also, if it is not spiritual, it is only social. And that's fine, and we appreciate that too, because that's part. But when we have it in us all the time, it's our life. We like to be together. That's why I want to encourage some of you when the service is over, maybe you, you have to run out to your car to go to work today, or you have to run out to the car to go do some duty or do something. But I advise you that because you are hidden with Christ and you have Christ's life, that you can develop affection, relationships, connections, with people. We are hungry for connection. And no one can explain how that works except it is our life now. Because in verse 4 it says, when Christ who is our life. This is spiritual life. We love each other. Maybe linger in the cafe or linger in the hallway or on the sidewalk and and receive a ministry and then give one. And our church is very good at that. Many times, even two hours after the service, people are still not out of here. We, we enjoy that. I enjoy that. But the point isn't, the, the point is, is a deep one. You have love now. Grow in that love. You have faith now. Grow in that faith. You have new affections for the things you can't see that are real. And they're you're eating food. They're real food. We come to the church to be fed. Understand something. It's fun to go out to the car and say, wow, that I get it or I understand it. And drive home with it kind of ruminating in your heart and in your mind because you are seeking the things that are above and that are very real, a very real part of your new life. Therefore then, verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. This is putting to death. It means a conscious effort to slay the remaining sin in our flesh. Actually, it means, in our words, we would say, I died, I am hid. Whenever sin is surfacing in my heart, and it does, I don't pay it the attention that it wants to have. I, I'm not feeding it. I'm, I'm rather living in a mind and I'm saying, that has no right to my life. That is not going to control me. I know where that leads me. I see the end result. I always find it fascinating on these liquor bottles 
that they usually have like gentlemen or the names of people that seem to be sensible or are honorable. Johnny Walker, top hat and cane, an English gentleman with high boots on, walking straight with a long stride. But I don't find people that are drinking that looking like him. I mean, I, what is the point? I want to know where this woman that is attractive will bring me. Because wisdom asks that question. What is the consequence of my decision? Why am I making the decision? What is in my heart? Is it my old heart or is it my new heart? Is it my sin nature or is it God's mind? And God's mind sometimes is, is incredibly refreshing because he challenges us to live by faith. Trust me, I will take care of you. Trust me, I will speak to you. And when we are sins, look at verse 5. There's a list there. <coughs> the members which are upon the earth. Members, the rabbis had a teaching about the man had 248 parts in his body. 248 parts, and every part has an ambitious sin nature. That part is for this sin. This part is for that sin. And this part is for that sin. And they taught that the law of Moses was to address every part of my sin nature. But we have learned that there is no law that can control my sin nature. There is no law that can be given to me so that I can live by the law and control this problem that I have here that we described by uh, Nancy here or Lucy from... Uh, this one, she doesn't have hair. We got to fix that. <laughs> Lucy from Charlie Brown. You know, she, it, it, I don't have a law that can keep me away from a law that will give me the wisdom, a law that will govern my life. By the law, no man is perfect. Per, for the law makes no man perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did. The cross is what I have now. The cross says that I died. Look at The cross says I died and I'm hid with Christ in God. And the cross says that my sin has no authority over my life. It is like a chicken with its head cut off. Have you ever seen that happen? You cut the head off and the, ch the chicken runs around, around the courtyard, the barnyard, rounds, runs around and then finally drops. But it's running without a head. Its nervous system is firing. The legs are working, the electronic, the whole thing is firing, but there is no head. That is like my sin nature. My sin nature says, you want that woman? And I just wait a second and I say, God... What do you have to say? I'm relating to you. I'm enjoying you. I don't even care about what that voice is saying. And it drops over dead. It's dead. It has no power. But it's up and running. And it's running around, but it has no authority over my life because I died. And now I live. But I'm living in a hidden place. People don't even understand why you are so blessed. It is hidden. But I am blessed. We are blessed. We are free. We are living this way with God. You are a man of God, a woman of God. You're able to make these decisions and not lie to yourself. You're able to live with God. God will not lie to you. And then you do not lie to yourself. You are not lying to yourself. You're telling the truth to yourself. And you're saying that woman, and it's just an illustration, of course, but it has many applications. That woman, I cannot do that. 
It'll break my heart. It'll ruin my life. It'll bring something foul into my life. It'll cause so much trouble of all kinds. God is keeping me from, in, from myself in my temptation. I died, the cross means I live, but I live with a different quality of life. This is verse 5. Look at it. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, this sexual passion, these evil thoughts, this evil desire, all of this, covetousness is another word there. Evil concupiscence means evil desire. One has a more internal passion and the other one a more external one. All of this passion, all of this desire is subject to the cross. And you say, you do not have a right over my life because I died. You do not have authority over my life. You cannot to make this decision for me. I'm living the way of life is above to escape from the hell below. Hallelujah. How many? There was a Finnish uh, company, large Nokia, before it did the telephones. They did pneumatic drills, plastics, rubber, all kinds of engineering, and very famous, very powerful beginning and when it got into the phones it expanded and they they had a great uh, they had but before the phones came there was a CEO and the company was was plunging and the man just think a Finnish engineer professional manager leader highly qualified and he committed suicide tragic story you think your smartness is good enough? Do you think your culture, background, personality, benefits, blessings, smartness? You cannot escape the hell below. You must find something above you, beyond you. And that's why Christ came. Do you see? That cross means that I can live beyond myself. That's the testimony of the church, that we are living beyond ourselves. That's the message on the street to people. It is that we can live beyond, we actually not just can, but we are privileged to. God is insisting upon it, that we would be the objects of his grace and that Christ would be seen now, still now in this life, now in this world as it is. In this closing it says, covetousness, which is idolatry. I think I, I just want to maybe just say something. I hope it doesn't, you know, don't misunderstand me. Like Christmas is coming, and Christmas is a great time for families. And I, I think it's beautiful to buy gifts and have a beautiful time of celebration. Uh, a child and Christmas is beautiful. And I think it's so awesome. But on the other hand, too, I just have to also uh, safeguard my spending in some measure. I can be very generous, but I cannot say that, that the happiness of my Christmas time is directly relational to the amount of money I spend. More money spent, more happiness is there. There has to be some other kind of way of thinking about it. And spending money, that is your business, not mine. I'm only trying to say a few words of encouragement for us. That in the same way that I cannot be self-indulgent with my living style and do whatever comes to my heart, whatever comes to my mind, I make decisions based entirely on myself. I need to seek the way that is above to escape from financial disaster below. I need to find a way to love my family and be judicious in my lifestyle. I cannot overeat because God will help me with that. And if you have that as a habit or a problem, we understand it. But I'm only saying I've got to believe my weaknesses may be different, but I've got to believe the answer is the same. I died, but now I live, and I'm living in a secret place, and I have a new identity, 
for me to live as Christ God. Jesus, please help me in my relationships. Help me to forgive people. Help me to be a prayer warrior. Help me to be a church attendee and eat and partake of what the message is. Help me to be put on Christ Jesus. And, and let, help me to live when I am tempted and I see this situation and lie to myself. And that's what he did. He said, oh, it's going to work out okay. All oh, the woman, I, I'm just attracted to her. She's so pleasant to be with. But then just behind it, just behind it. Gambling, oh, how great, how great it is. Oh, just behind it is a disaster. And so on, and so on, and so on. Heroin and the drugs and so on. Just a little bit behind. I mean, I'm not in vain. I'm just saying the Lord has given us a way that is above. And it affects us so that we are free and we are learning this. So that's the message today. Hallelujah. <laughs> you pray with me please <clears throat> the Lord would not ask us to put it off unless he made it possible for us to put it off put off the old man the Lord would not tell us that we could live a righteous life unless he told us that he made it, he gave his son so we could live a righteous life. The Lord would not tell us to be wise unless he made it a way for us to be wise. He would not tell us to endure in our temptations unless there was a way of escape. And that's the way that we're learning about here. And we honor you, Lord, for that in our hearts ask you to bring it home to us again and again and rejoice in it. That people that leave the assembly, they, they stop hearing the message that challenges them to look and seek the things that are above. Uh, the people that leave fellowship, they are people that are not availing themselves to words of life, words of truth, words of encouragement, words of love, and they need it. We need it. It's our food. How could a man get big and strong unless he ate good, solid food? Uh, how could a man overcome temptation unless he ate good, solid things that are from above? How can we endure our trials unless we get established in the things that are above to escape the hell below? Would you pray with me now? If you're not, not a believer, today is the day for you to believe. Believe in him. Just do it by faith. Make a decision. I believe in Jesus Christ. I need Jesus Christ. God is showing me. I, I do not understand it. I do not know a lot. But you don't need to know when you need to eat a pizza. You just eat the pizza. You don't need to know all the molecular and physiological phenomena. You just love the pizza, same with God. Just take him and believe in him and eat. And he feeds you and he gives you his son and say yes to Christ. Raise your hand, please, by faith. Say yes to Jesus. Anyone in the auditorium, anyone on the internet, say yes to Jesus. Yes to him, anyone at all. Yes, Lord, thank you for the things that are above the way, how much we need it. It is our very life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And tonight we'll speak about overcoming our temptations and feed us this truth and lead us in this new way in your name without discouragement, without fear, but with deep encouragement. Amen. <clears throat>